How's it going guys? Welcome back to Planescape. I know this is meant to be a daily series, but I got a few things in the works right now. I'm working on polishing up a game that's been a long time in the works, and I also got a stupid little animation I'm working on. That's eating up a bit more of my time, and so I'm trying to balance things out a little bit. A good way to save time is just space this series out a little bit for at least a little while. Not not a permanent thing, but let's let's continue on here talking to some of the people who I said it might be interesting to talk to. I haven't talked to one of these creepy gargoyle dragon creatures, and I don't know if Athelgrin is his name or if that's like the species. I forgot to check to see if this guy had the same one. You see a scaled fiend who looks very similar to the one standing next to him. In addition to the pierced left ears, both are black-hued and reptilian, with bat wings tucked against themselves. This one is missing a tooth on its right side. Ah, Tajirin, it says. Our old friend has returned to pay us a vis visit. Oh, this guy is Tajirin, so these are the names. And yet another person who knows me, so I must spend a lot of time in this bar in between being dead. Oh, I, it's very rare that I talk to two people at once. This might be the first time it's happened. So he has, a Athelgrin, so he has. Yet his eyes do not gleam as once they did. What do you suppose brings him back to us? What does bring you back to us, friend? Who are you? What are you doing? What is this place? Tell me about fiends. That's oddly not specific. What, what do you possibly? What do you? What do you mean? As we see it, there are two kinds of fiends: those who are correct and those who are not. Our side, that of the Beitzu, is correct. The other side, that of the cursed, hatred, chaotic Tanneri, is incorrect and must be exterminated. So these these creatures are fiends, I suppose. I was thinking of it just as like the normal noun or adjective or whatever it would be. We hold the Tanneri directly responsible for the blood war. We are not for them. We have, were it not for them, we could have settled the lower plains in peace and wouldn't have all the bother of fighting this wretched war. Nor would the unfortunate spillovers into other plains be such a cause for concern among the Nambly Pambly do gooders. <laughs> Na Namby Pam being? Namby Pam being? I, it's really weird to see a big demonic reptile creature say like a hoodly toodly or nimby bimbly or Namby Pam being. It's like, it's, it's too merry of a word for such an evil looking creature. The Tanneri are directly to blame for the multiverse's sad state of affairs. That's not really what I was asking. I wanted to know the differentiates you from them. Uh, mm. The fiend pauses a moment and then brightens. Ah, uh, yes. You see, we represent law and order. Those who break the law must be punished. If we have no law, we only have anarchy. And surely you can see what anarchy has done for the abyss. It has spawned horrors beyond imagining. Any excesses the Beta Zoo state may have indulged in are simply to counter the rising tide of chaos represented by the Tanneri. We mean no harm to anyone, we just prefer to understand where the boundaries are. I have other questions. Some questions, perhaps we have answers. We are certainly eager to aid you, old friend. I've asked so many people what is this place, I feel like I don't have anything to say there. What are you guys doing? What are we doing? Why is it not perfectly clear, old friend? We are on leave from our beloved assignment, taking for ourselves some much-needed rest, and perhaps inducing some additional recruitment for our glorious cause. Our superiors fully support our presence, to be sure. In a more immediate sense, we are taking our entertainment in this delightful establishment. And of course, we are celebrating the return of our old friend. Do they mean me? Thanks, guys. However, the stench of the breezes, which occasionally waft the scent of goodness in the door, debases us somewhat, leaving us physically, mentally, and spiritually weaker. Fortunately, the air in this ward of the city carries a delightful tang of pain and supplication. Wouldn't you agree? Again, the fiend smiles broadly at you. I have other questions. Who are you? Or are they going to be mad? They clearly know who I am. Ah, Thielgren, time has robbed our companion's memory. You honestly do not recall us, do you? Truly, I am aggrieved. But, 
As am I, Tangerine. Tangerine truly aggrieved. Yet I rest easy. It has, after all, been many hundreds of years, and we know how the minds of mortals tend to dissipate with age. I'm hundreds of years old? Holy fuck. This is... I, I must not be strictly human. Like, that was obviously the case by the fact that I'm, like, undead at this point or whatever. But I was never human, I guess? But I... They claim I'm mortal still. Ah, well spoken, old friend. We are a pair of Abishi on leave from our current assignments in Batur. I am Tangerine, the Thrice Damned, so named for my ability to find the best in every situation. How is that the case? This is a Theogrin who has earned himself no special name, though not for lack of trying. I personally like to call him a Theogrin the Limp Dict. <laughs> I, I will adopt that name and I will proceed to call him that at, at any at all points where I can find the opportunity lack of trying what do you mean a theogrin ignores you as it responds to its companion and once again tangerine you have cut straight to the truth of the matter though perhaps it is best not to have earned the sort of notice one bearing the name thrice damned must surely have incurred I had other questions Morty whispers to you Boss, I don't like this. They're not supposed to be here. The Blood War hasn't kicked the Celestial's ass is bass bad enough that any fiend can go on furlough. For for Lou, for Lou, they want something. Tread carefully. In the meantime, Tangerine continues to respond to his companion. In its turn, Tangerine ignores you as it replies to its comrade. Once again, I maintain that any notice is better than no notice at all. The Abishi turns back to you. Old friend, does this answer your question as to our identities? I suppose it'll have to, but I have other questions. He says they want something. Um, no, I'm going to move on from these guys. I don't want to push it too long. Morty says be careful. I don't, I don't really exactly want to see where that goes. Let's check out... Dak Khan. Presumably it's it's a first and middle name. It's not just one name. The man before you is old. His dry yellow skin has the scars of one who has traveled everywhere and never rested long in any one place. His pinched face is inhumanly angular and his ears swept out from his skull, tapering to points. He wears a loose fitting orange tunic and a strange shimmering blade is strapped across his back. The blade looks to be a two-pronged glaive made of some metal whose surface swirls like a film oil on a pond. Greetings! The man turns to you, his eyes like polished coal. He stares through you, and for a moment you wonder if he might be blind. The weapon suddenly turns a dead, flat black, mirroring the man's eyes. Are you alright? Traveler. Well, the... the Places where voice acting come in are very unpredictable. He says nothing for a moment, merely searches your face with his eyes. Hail, traveler. His voice is quiet and somber, like a wind whispering through the branches of a great tree. Hail. The man meets your gaze, his eyes burrowing into yours. His weapon drains of its black color, resuming its shimmering you noticed before you spoke to him. Your eyes are the weight of one who has traveled far to be in this place. You could say that. The man's gaze does not waver from yours. I am known as Dakon. The emphasis he places on the word known strikes you as odd, yet familiar at the same time. You are not known to me. I do not know myself. That is for the best. In knowing yourself, there would be little in the plains left worth knowing. He falls silent for a moment, still studying you with his coal black eyes. I would know why you have come to this city. I'm looking for answers. I have many questions. Speak your questions. I will hear you. Your features are unfamiliar to me. What are they? You can't just walk up to someone and ask them why their features look the way they do. Come on, nameless one. Have a little tact. Can you tell me about the city? You seem to place a special emphasis on knowing. What do you mean? What is your, what is the blade you have? Asking about Farad, asking about the journal. 
Uh, I haven't asked anyone about the journal for a while, but I really feel like I'm just going to stumble across it at some point. I don't even know. I'll throw it out there. The lo location of such a thing is not known to me. You weirdo and you're knowing, I'm going to ask that question now because it's such a recurring thing. All things, whether structure or flesh, their existence is defined by their knowing of themselves. And if a man does not know himself, when a mind does not know itself, it is flawed. When a mind is flawed, the man is flawed. When a man is flawed, that which he touches is flawed. Dakon pauses. It is said that what a flawed man sees, his eyes make broken. Do you know yourself? Dakon falls silent. His coal black eyes take on the same distance that you noticed when you first spoke. Do you know yourself? When Dakon speaks again, his voice has changed. His words echo like a great stone dropping into a chasm. It looks like he is forcing the words from his chest. It is not my will that you know this. Perhaps I was being too kind in phrasing the question. Tell me. Ah, it would be so interesting to push him. Let's do it. Let's push him. The words come out of Dakon slowly, as if they were being carried one by one. It has come to pass that I do not know myself. Why? Dakon's voice drops to a whisper like sand. I do not know why. I know it has happened, but I know not how, nor the when, nor how to know myself once more. Never mind, I have other questions. That's really uh, ominous and shady, and I feel, feel a little bad for the guy. I feel uh, a little bit of empathy there. We can relate on the not knowing ourselves front. Uh, tell me about the blade you have. That's cool as shit. Maybe, maybe you'll be a little happier talking about your cool sword rather than your depressing past. It is a blade. <laughs> that, that's the closest I can come to pronouncing it. It is an object that lets others know the rank of the wielder. <laughs> what does that mean? Dakon falls silent for a moment as if searching for the correct words. In your tongue, the closest translation is... <laughs> The people may shape it with their thoughts. <laughs> I'm sorry if that sounded absolutely disgusting. Chaos matter. That sounds pretty cool. The people, um, shape it with their thoughts. That sounds cool. Kakaya is not shaped by heat, but by knowing oneself. So shouldn't yours be, like, just totally fucked then? It is a mirror that reflects the will of the wielder on its surface and in its edge. When one knows themselves, the blade is strong. Harder and stronger than steel. When one does not know themselves, the blade is as water, formless and weak. Are you willing to sell it? <laughs> Doubt it. I could trade you one limb limb for it. Yeah, you will get hours of fun out of it versus having, having a, a wet, watery blade. It would become as nothing in the hands of another. The blade knows my mind and I know its heart. We die the same death. I have other questions. What are you? A Githzirai. A Githzirai. A Githzirai is one of the people. One of the people? Are we just gonna, am I just going to keep re repeating him and he's, he's going to repeat himself? And are we just, how long are we going to be stuck in this fucking loop for? A Githzirai. Yes, but what are the Githzirai exactly? Answer my question. Don't string me along like this, Dakon. It's annoying. Dakon is silent for a moment and speaks. Our history does not need to be made known to you. You would bleed to death on time's blade before I recited a fraction of the histories of our people. I don't need to know your histories, but I would know of your people as they are now. That's a, maybe that's a little bit rude. I don't give a shit about your history, just tell me some shit. Dakon is silent for a moment. Oh, I have read that in his, his my weird, awfully voice acted voice. Know this and accept it as an answer. We are the people who make our home upon the shifting plane of limbo. With a deft motion, Dakon slips the blade from his back and holds it before him. Wait, see what happens. There, we mold the matter of limbo with our minds. We forge cities with our thoughts. 
As you watch, a series of rippling waves of metal begin to roll forth from the center of the blade. The pitch and crest of the waves match the inflections in Dakon's voice. In this chaos we dwell with only our knowing to perceive us. We are the Gatsiri. I have to assume he was, uh, he was trying to make the sword look as cool as possible with as much inflection and emphasis in random places as he could manage. Just to add a little, a little showmanship to the displaying of his blade there to make it look all the more intricate and, and awesome. I already asked him about the blade, so I won't I won't continue down that path. Tell me about the Gaziri, the the city, the blade, the knowing. I've gone basically all this. Tell me about the city. It is known by the name of Sigil. Among the people, it is known as the city that does not know itself. It doesn't know itself. What do you mean? The city exists, but it does not know itself. Man, you're really bad at explaining things. Repeating yourself doesn't count. In not knowing itself, its existence is flawed. You speak as if the city is alive. It may not be aware and know itself in the sense that you or I might know ourselves, but it lives, it grows, it changes, and touches the minds of all that live here. Why did you say the city does not know itself? The city exists in opposition to itself. It has set itself apart from the plains, yet it seeks to be everywhere at once. Its walls are doors, yet it keeps those doors locked. Such an existence tells of a thing that does not know itself. If not knowing itself, in not knowing itself, it is flawed. When you say that the city is everywhere at once, what do you mean its walls are doors truth? What if the city is not flawed, a thing that does not need to be ordered and have a purpose to know itself? What if these contradictions are strengths that you cannot see? Ooh. Let's get into, like, these uh, existential debates here. Can you have an existential debate about a city? Seems like that's usually, like, a self reflectance thing. But anyways, let's, let's pose a hard-hitting question here. To answer your question, a question. What if the city is flawed and you see its contradictions all around you? That's dodgy as fuck. Answer the question, Dakon. To your question, a question. You claim the city's existence is flawed. You have accepted this rather than explore the possibility that something greater may exist. That suggests you are flawed and that you do not search for knowledge, but only for a convenient answer. Yeah, stick it to him. Dakon falls silent. There is no knowing the answer to the questions you have asked. Yet the city exists. That is all. Yet I would maintain that we know ourselves by the questions we ask and the ones we do not. If we cease asking questions and accept only what we can perceive, then we will cease to know ourselves. Dakon's voice has changed slightly, become heavier. Such words have been spoken before. I've heard them and know them. Where have you heard them? From me? Because that'd be fucked. The words are mine. Once I knew them and knew their meaning, I had forgotten them until you spoke. Dakon's gaze travels through you and his blade stops shivering. Jesus, did he just stop knowing himself for a second and like, uh, fuck up his sword? <laughs> Bleeding of all color until it is translucent. There is a moment of silence, then Dakon looks up at you. I would travel your path with you. Oh shit, do I get to pick up a new follower? Me and Morty have a buddy? I do love Morty's companionship, probably more than anyone else's with his wacky remarks, but he doesn't chime in very often. It would be nice to have a new guy. I don't know if I'm going to commit to doing the bah, 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 bah voice for Dakon for the entirety of the time because I was starting to lose it a little bit and it was getting a little harder to force out. And honestly, on the fly here, I can't tell if it sounds that much different from my regular voice anyways. <laughs> I'll consider it. I have other questions. I accept an extra blade would be welcome, except for the fact that your blade just went to shit. You are old. Of what use could you be? No, you're welcome. The path is mine. Strange enough, his voice seems distant, and it echoes as if he were speaking from across a great distance. Very well, let's go. Yeah! Woohoo! We got ourselves a new companion. Oh man, he looks dopey as shit when I look at him in, in the uh, menu here. What what does what does he have for a weapon? 
Dacon Zerthblade. Oh, his weapon's way better than my stupid jagged knife and my green steel dagger. What else are you carrying? You got some whispering flask, unbroken circle. Uh, da -da -da. I don't. I won't read that right now. The whispering flask adds some strength. Wow, this guy does look a little bit frail when I see him here, but he's he's a fighter mage, and I I think I'm just a fighter, right? Just a fighter. Uh, having a mage could be cool. He's got skills: reign of anger, submerge the will, and power of one. Jeez, that sounds cool. Zerthamon's teachings allow the channeling of anger into streams of unerring missiles that quickly strike those that oppose you. Uh, you just shoot a bunch of miss missiles at people. Submerge the will. When the will is submerged, new strength is gained. The strength to endure and protect against adversity. With knowing the teachings of the third circle of Zerthamon, greater protection against all forms of attacks. So it's just, uh, he's got a shield. Power of one, and from Gith, the warrior queen, came the knowing of oneself, and from knowing came immense power. Uh, the spells increases the target's strength score by a certain number of points. And, okay, just a couple of things. He's got one attack skill and then a couple, like, booster skills. Uh, I don't know if I've talked to Creek Knees, but I don't know, I don't know if it's worth talking to anyone else in here. I might have to go outside and look for... what was the dude's name? I'm looking for Jetai... Jelai. He was supposed to be somewhere around here. Oh, he's stumbling around the street outside. So I think next time, guys, now now that I got like a new crew full of people, and I, maybe I'll make sure they, they form up into something useful. I got my, got myself a new crew, we'll head outside, and we'll, uh, we'll try and find Jetai together. I think that could be cool, right? I just gotta figure out how to make sure everyone follows rather than uh, only the one guy moving. Oh, uh, no, it's select all. There we go. I just hadn't had them selected. All right, perfect. So next time, then, we'll go look for Jatai outside. Thank you guys all so much for watching. I'll see you again soon. Not necessarily tomorrow while I figure some of this stuff out.